So I'm feeling a little unsure about making this video because the way that I read maths questions appears to be different to the way that most people recommend that you read maths questions. When I Google how to read a maths problem, on the first page we can see step one in effectively translating and solving word problems is to read the problem entirely. Don't start trying to solve anything when you've only read half. Scroll further and you'll find three reads strategy, which is famous. And when you click into there, you learn that the three read strategy advocates for reading the question three times. I'm on the second page of results now, and I need to slow down a bit and read the whole word problem once, and even better, twice. And every result I see says something like this. So as you can probably guess by now, I am not a fan of any of this. I think this is the wrong way to approach a maths question. So what I'm going to do next is show you a few maths questions from past exam papers and show you how I read them. Actually, let's play a game. I'm going to flash this question up on the screen in a second. When I do, you pause the video and read it. And when you do, think about how you read it. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one, go. Pause the video, read it. All right, how are you reading that? I'm going to show you how I read it. I don't read it like old Harry Potter here. I start... I start wherever I can see the cognitive verb, the question that's being asked. This right here is the very first thing that I read in that question. Determine the area of the shaded triangle. And then I ask myself, which triangle? And I look here and I see the triangle. And then I think to myself, how would I find the area of that triangle? I know that area is equal to half, blah, blah, blah. So if I knew the base and if I knew the height, in other words, if I knew that coordinate and I knew that coordinate, I'd know the area of the triangle. And then I would come up to here and start looking for information that is going to allow me to find this bit and this bit. That's how I would read that question, starting from essentially the bottom and working my way up. Now, it's always not, it's not quite as linear as that all the time. I'm going to do a few more examples here and show you how I read these questions. All right, I'm going to leap over to a second question now. And when I do, I want you to think about where you start reading it. Watch your eyes. Where do your eyes go? All right, three, two, one, go. All right, how do we do this? Well, when I read this question, I jump straight to here, right? Determine. Determine the probability that Leonardo catches a bus to work on exactly one day in a given five-day week. One day out of five days. What have I been able to ascertain? I know straight away that this question is binomial probability, right? I know that that straight away, bam, this is binomial probability. I also know that I've got five days in the given thing, so that must be my number of trials. So the only thing that's left is to find a probability. All right, so I come up to here and I'm looking for a probability. Uh, I'm, I'm not reading the question like a book. I'm looking at it and sort of from the, I'm backing up. On average, he catches the bus to work on three of the five days, bam. I'm done. The other stuff here is filler, right? A little story about Leonardo's life, a little bit of stuff about independence to, to cover themselves that it's a proper binomial question. But those are the only two bits of information. And I read this bottom bit first. Hopefully you get the understanding that this is not a close reading of the maths question. I am definitely not following a three read strategy of this thing. I'm barely reading the question at all. Okay, let's look at another question. Ready? Three, two, one, go. You can pause it, and now I'm going to go. Okay, what have we got? Obviously, I'm going to start at the bottom where it says determine the values of A and B. And then what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to say A and B. What's A and B? And I scan, I look back. Don't, don't look at, don't try to read the whole question. Scan, where's A and B? There's A and B. Oh, okay, I want to know some unknowns in that function. That function must be that function, right? Notice I'm not reading the question. I'm following the clues. I'm like Sherlock Holmes here. Determine this. Here's A and B. Here's the function. Okay, there's some stuff about the function. Oh, okay. Finally, it's an integration question. I see now there's an area here. There's an area here. There's a function there. So now I know how I'm going to find A and B. 
you can see I'm actually not reading that much of the question. I'm grabbing the information that I need and then I'm using it to find the thing I knew I needed to find because I read the question in the what I think is the correct order. The questions I've been showing you are questions that are like complex questions towards the end of an exam. But what about the simpler questions? Same deal. All right, so here we go with example four. It's a simpler question, but it is pretty wordy. And three, two, one, go. All right, how are you gonna do that one? Now, I look at it from afar, and I see that it's a part A, part B, right? So I look for the cognitive verb in A, or I look for the thing they're asking me to do, which is determine P, all right? So determine P for a PI value of one in 100,000. All right, I need some sort of equation or something. Oh, there it is, all right? And I know PI, this is weird, PI value of one in 100,000. Normally you'd expect a PI value to be like the number five or the number seven or something. What what do they mean by one in 100,000? All right, let's read around this. For the Neo asteroid bar, okay, that's not useful. P is given by blah, where PI represents the impact probability. Ah, so one in 100,000, that's a probability. So now I can put that in as either a fraction or a decimal, and I've got enough information. What's all this stuff up here? I don't care. It does not help me figure this thing out at all, so I never have to read it. You can see that we're straying pretty far from that whole close reading three things idea. All right, we can do one more. All right, last question here. See what your eyes do when you read this one. Three, two, one, go. All right, obviously I'm gonna start at part A. Show that C equals three over two. C, what's C? Oh, there's C. I have all of the information I need now, right? I need to know that, I need to show the C equals three over two. I can see that this is a probability density function. I can figure out C. Determine the probability that this is this. Determine the variance of this. And so you can see that order when you start working this way. What's, what's this first sentence? The amount of gravel in tons sold by a construction company. What useless information? Who needs? All I need to know as a student doing this exam is what do you want me to tell you? And how do I find it? What information do I need to find it? And that's all of it. All right, so some of you have watched this video and you've said, well, that's how I've always done it. That's the obvious way to do it. Why would I do it any other way? Some of you have watched this video and said, whoa, what? I know, absolutely not. You have to start at the start, read it once, read it twice, read it again, highlight this, highlight that, do whatever. Now, whichever way you decide to do it, it's entirely up to you, but I would invite you to try flicking through an exam and reading it the way that I'm suggesting and see if it makes a difference to how quickly and how efficiently you can understand what these questions are asking of you and whether it makes any difference to your success in each question. Have fun with it. Good luck.